Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Part of my come on now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Let's just jump right on in on the topic at hand, and that is the Caitlin Clark effect on the ratings for Sunday's game one. As all four series started Sunday with game one, the Liberty played against the Dream at 1 p.m. The Fever played the Sun at 3. The Lynx played the Mercury at 5. And the Aces played the Storm at 10. Before we jump on in, thank you for your continued support of our channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. And hit up all of our social media. Come on now. The, come on now. Podcast, Twitter, Facebook. Sorry. Come on now, podcast, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Come on now, pod on Twitter. Follow us there, please. As well as you to subscribe to and view our, check out our videos. We told you who people care about. We keep saying it. We keep repeating it. And you keep lying to yourselves. You keep telling us that people are watching. People care. People think these other players are great. People care to see them. <clears throat> well, the, the, the ratings for the season came out, and Caitlin Clark's ratings were one an average of 1.2 million viewers per game, and the rest of the league was 394,000 per game. Now, when you take into account that last season, the league averaged 505,000 viewers per game, one could now see that the viewership for the rest of the league went down and the viewership for the Indiana Fever was about, what, three times as much, more than three times as much, 1.2 million over 394,000. It's not close. So the ratings this season for the WNBA will probably be over 505,000 because of Caitlin Clark's existence and her appearance and her gracing the WNBA with her presence, providing her marketing, providing her fan base, providing her skill, her ability, all that good stuff. But you're going to sit here and tell me that the league cares about Asia Wilson. You're going to sit here and tell me that the league cares about Sabrina Ionescu. You're going to sit here and tell me that the league cares about, I don't know, Nafisa Collier. You're going to tell me that the league cares about Enrique Gumbawale. They don't. People don't care. People do not care about these players. And if I was saying the league I'm talking about people. People do not care to see these players. If they did, they would have watched. Yesterday, Sunday, the Indiana Fever draw 1.8 million viewers. Let's repeat that. 1.8 million viewers. That number more than doubled the average viewership for the WNBA Finals last year. Season, which was about 728,000. You know what the other three games averaged? You don't have to believe me. I will show you. <clears throat> I will show you. As you see, Caitlin Clark and the Indiana Fever's blowout loss to Connecticut averaged 1.8 million viewers on ABC. The other three contests on ESPN averaged 425,000 viewers as the league competed with the NFL Sunday. Let me give you a snapshot on the average viewership of an NFL Sunday game. It's approximately 21 million. The game on Sunday night between the Chiefs and the Falcons did about 26 million, 25, 26 million, something like that, 27 million. So in comparison to the NFL, Caitlin Clark didn't draw anything. 
but in comparison. But she grabbed a chunk of people who otherwise more than likely would have been watching the, an NFL game in some market. Let's look at the other games. <clears throat> the 1 p.m. contest between the Atlanta Dream and the New York Liberty drew 410,000 viewers. This is the team that plays in New York City. New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of. There's nothing you can do. New York, with a metropolitan area that has over 10 million people. The New York Liberty, which puts an average of 10,000 fans in their seats, draws 410,000 viewers at a 1 o'clock game. Did, uh, I'm sorry, did, did, um, did, did the Giants or Jets play at 1 o'clock? I'm just curious. The Jets played on Thursday. So you can't look at that. Okay, the Giants, I think, played at 1 o'clock. The Giants played at 1 o'clock against the Cleveland Browns. But, again, 410,000. Hmm. The Phoenix Mercury and Minnesota Lynx averaged 403,000 viewers. So we're going down. And the nightcap. Between the aces, the aces, the MVP, Asia Wilson, who everyone cares about. I guess the Seattle Storm drew 461,000 viewers. Let's put this into context. While the Fever Sun Contest had a playoff viewership record, the three other WNBA playoff openers that aired on ESPN only averaged close to 425,000 viewers. Less than the 470,000 average for the 2023 playoffs. So the games that were played on Sunday in a season in which Caitlin Clark has put these women on her back in whatever arena she goes to average less viewers than the playoffs did last year. You cannot make this up. We've told you, we repeated it, and we said it again and again and again and again. And you don't want to listen. Nobody gives a flying you know what about the WNBA if Caitlin Clark is not on that court. You don't believe it? The numbers are in your face. Caitlin Clark drew 18.6 million viewers on average to the NCAA championship last year, which would still be less than a typical Sunday NFL afternoon. That's how popular the NFL is, even with professional football, in my opinion, opinion, being the worst it's been in my lifetime. And it's very hard to watch NFL football now, even for myself. Realistically, I watched one game this weekend, and that was the Dolphins debacle against the Seattle Seahawks. And I watched a piece of did I even watch a piece of the Sunday night game? Who the hell played Sunday night? I don't even remember who played Sunday night. That's how that's how ridiculous it is. I don't remember who played Sunday night. Sunday night. Oh, Chiefs Falcons. Okay, I watched the last six minutes of the Chiefs Falcons. I watched about five or ten minutes of the Bills Jaguars blowout. And I watched the last quarter or so, quarter and a half of the Bengals Commanders game. I don't watch NFL football like I used to. It's not good. It's a shit product. But it, as a shit product to me, it's still a better product than the WNBA. I would never watch another WNBA game ahead of an NFL Sunday. In fact, you see the TVs behind me. The Indiana Fever game was going on at the same time as the Dolphins game. I'm a Dolphins fan. Indiana was on the big screen. The Dolphins were up on the corner. 
because I cared more to see Indiana play than the Dolphins. Not to mention the Dolphins are playing with no quarterbacks, but I still would have rather I, – I was going to put Indiana on the big screen. And then once the game ended, I flipped it. But I didn't put on the Minnesota Lynx game against the Mercury. Who cares? And clearly nobody else does either, as the ratings this year so far are worse than last year. But you'll tell us anything. You'll tell us that people love this sport. You'll tell us that people love this product. And the fact of the matter is they don't. They think it's fucking trash. And they don't watch it. But you keep singing your song and dance. And when the Indiana Fever is eliminated, the ratings for the WNBA will go back into the toilet and won't be anywhere near what they hope it will be like. The WNBA files will not draw in one game 1.5 million. Mark it down. They might crack a million. And that's if the series is not 3-0. And that's if the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces are playing. Because if you have anybody else playing anybody else, no one's going to have interest in a Liberty Connecticut Sun series. No one's going to have interest in a Lynx Liberty series. No one's going to have interest in a Aces uh, Sun series. I think they might have interest in an Aces Link series, but for the most part, nobody cares. Caitlin Clark is what makes people turn on the TV. You don't believe it. You keep denying it, but the numbers are hitting you right in the goddamn face. So suck on it. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Ring that bell. Come on now.